Hi, uh, my name is Gavin Duffy. I'm delighted to be here this evening. Thanks a lot for tuning in uh, to launch uh, Down to Business. So it's a new Liebenser business book uh, published by Folins. Um, and this webinar is just designed to kind of bring you through a couple of uh, the key features in it and why I think it could be really useful for you and your students to, to have the book in class. So um, the whole reason behind producing the book, I suppose, was um, I've been teaching Liebenser business for 17 years or so. And it's the main kind of my main area that I really kind of focus in on. And within that, I've always kind of been interested in the exam technique and management side of things and helping my students to kind of maximize their points. Uh, I've also found then that it's kind of the area that has the most frustration, I suppose, with students and with teachers. And in my school, I find students are kind of put off, even kind of taking on business sometimes because they're, they always hear it's very hard to get a H1 or how to, it's very hard to do wellness. Um, and then kind of from meeting teachers at BSCI nights or different evenings or even kind of within school, the frustration always seems to be that people can't get marks or they're, they're not sure why they're losing marks. And I suppose I wanted to tie that in then to the book and apply it to uh, uh, all the kind of content that everyone would need to cover in the first place. So I suppose within Exam Solutions, what I started with my own classes years ago was creating um, something we call the Uber Pack, and it was all the solutions to all the past paper questions kind of to have in addition to, their, to the book. And they, the feedback from that was really good. And then I started putting it up on a website. And again, then feedback from teachers and students everywhere seemed to be that it was really useful, very practical. And then I kind of wanted to merge that in like with an actual Leave Insert book itself so that you wouldn't have to go to two sources um, and have them from different areas. And then I suppose to further myself, um, my kind of understanding of the exam, I actually went back and sat Leave Insert business last year and the year before. Um, because the change in GDPR meant that you could go in and uh, take pictures and scan your script. So I was able to go in and do that. And then kind of use that to develop a, a real clear understanding of where marks go, how answers should look for different verbs and uh, different types of questions. And then what I've done with that, with my own notes and my students, was I actually put uh, pictures or kind of little uh, parts of the scripts into my notes so that when we're going through it in class uh, with our notes, then I can kind of go, well, have a look at 2018 here, see what I wrote, see where the marks went. And the feedback has been brilliant. Students seem to really enjoy it. And I've kind of noticed that their results really improved. They've gotten a lot better with kind of exam strategy. They're writing less and giving more important stuff. And uh, I've what I've then done, done is actually added that into the book. So. Um, I've put together just a little presentation with a few bits about what we're gonna, what's gonna, what the book is useful for, what the main features are, and then at the end we're gonna have questions and answers. So if anyone is on Facebook, you can just put up a comment, or if anyone is on Zoom, then there's a Q and A button that you can uh, have a question, and then I'll try and answer uh, some at the end. So, um, like I said, the kind of main aims in writing the book was making exam management and technique kind of much clearer for everyone. So. Kind of within that book then there's a couple of different things that uh, we have so each chapter has an exam focus section what that primarily deals with is the kind of verbs and the differences between let's say discuss and illustrate and evaluate and what i'll do what i've done is i've broken down each of them explained uh, what you should do when a certain verb is used or when a question is phrased in a certain way and then I've used a past paper question from the last two or three years and given a, a kind of a good answer and then a not, uh, a not full mark answer or a bad answer to kind of contrast and compare them. So that just say your student had done a class exam and they didn't get full marks for discuss and um, because they used headings you could say oh well discuss is looked at in chapter nine you could go and open that and read that and then they could go and look at me explaining what you should do when the verb is discuss and then also what a, an answer that wouldn't get full marks is and then what an answer that would get full marks is and they can kind of use that to compare and contrast what they've given in their test so that um, they can uh, try and figure out where they've lost marks a lot easier. Um, within it then there's also a recent past paper q and A. so like in each chapter uh, there's a higher and ordinary level um, question and answer that has been asked recently and I suppose this is kind of to mirror my script so from the script like I was saying I throw it into my own notes um, within this then within the Q&A it's written as though it's a, a solution to it so a marking scheme is provided and then on the page then there's actually marks like a red underline and red numbers to the side shown where the marks are awarded for different things and it, can, it should be a really practical way of students realising how little they need to write to get marks once they have the keywords and they answer the verb. So I suppose one of the biggest issues that people have with leaving their business is that they 
would hope to just ride as much as they could um, and throw a lot of quantity at it in the hope that they'll hit the hit the keywords or hit the mark somewhere. Um, and I suppose what we what I've kind of learned even through doing the leave insert and the first year I did it, I actually I was going f full on at it and I kind of pretty much ran out of time towards the end of exam because I was trying to get so much down um, and just f fell into the a simple trap of leaving your business of overriding and then last year when I did it I was trying to the aim was to ride as little as I could and still get full marks or still get a, a top marks in all the questions and I was able to answer every short the ABQ and all the long questions within the time period and still achieve kind of close to full marks or full marks in nearly all the questions so what I learned from that was you just it's not about quantity it's all about the content hitting the keywords and then applying them in the right way um, with the verbs so the solutions and marks for the past paper questions really helps with that and I'll kind of I'll show you an example of that um, in the webinar then uh, at the end of a chapter <clears throat> every chapter has a key terms and definitions page and it's the most kind of important terms and the stuff that you cover within the chapter and I find that's just a really useful resource because the higher level and uh, students that are kind of pushing for the top grades are able to kind of refer to it and know exactly what they're needed. And then the, the weaker student or the person, the student who's struggling or uh, is looking at ordinary level, they, that can be used nearly as like, not quite a revision uh, page, but just kind of like a, this is what you really need to know if they needed to cut out a lot of content. So it makes it a lot easier for them to, to understand what's necessary or what's useful to have um, if they kind of get lost in, a, in, the, in the larger chapter. Okay. So the other aims in it then was to kind of produce easier to navigate pages. So kind of the general idea of it, I, I really enjoy like one idea per page. So what I was trying to create was that at the top of each page, um, like each page would start with a heading and then you'd be able to realize what you're going to kind of study on that page. And um, so that it's kind of a nice kind of clear thing, like even within the ratios here, a profitability ratio, and it's like one ratio then per page. Uh, and they're set up so that you can just go on this is return on investment and you're just kind of straight into that and um, so kind of other examples there like what's uh, what are the benefits of planning organizing uh, types of planning so that it's kind of nice and clear so we've re we've arranged the images in the book around kind of having it easy to uh, navigate you know exactly what you're going to be studying or trying to learn when you're on a particular page or two pages and uh, it should just make it much more user-friendly rather than things spilling everywhere and having lots of kind of uh, busy kind of pages and um, we also have a real life business and action section so um, rather than just have lots of like there's lots of uh, examples throughout the book relevant to all the the coursework but then to have additional kind of um, uh, stories or pieces about businesses what I did was I went out and actually talked to Irish businesses and entrepreneurs and met with 10 different ones and created business and action sections so uh, I have an example here to eat up of a uh, with a, it's a dog toy company so um, a friend of mine James McIlvena and his wife Lauren set up uh, Canine Connectables and they're selling dog toys so what I actually what I did rather than just kind of write a story about them I went and asked some kind of questions based on what the chapter is about so this chapter is idea generation um, and identifying business opportunities and the stages then are idea generation product screening concept development etc so what I did was uh, with James when I interviewed him then I was able to ask him stuff related to stage one two three four and five so that it ties in really nicely so the students uh, I've kind of given a sample of this to students in my class and they they really engaged with it more so than like one of the smaller kind of intro stories that um they would have been used to and i think it could really act as um a great thing i'll see if there's another one here i think with the dow bros and galway um, and just kind of asking questions that's in our uh, marketing mix and it's all about kind of branding and usps and place and different things and um where i find this could be really useful is your students might engage with it and then realize um, they could go and ask their own community about it and businesses in their own area and it could be used for kind of like doing projects or um, uh, even having field trips or looking at different businesses that they could visit as well and just, uh, just engage them with what's going on around them and give them real life uh, examples and also having a tie into the to the uh, chapters keywords and stuff um, and then the last thing then we have a student log as well and what I felt was really important to do in the student log was like we have an AFL section which is um, allows a lot more student reflection and you can see here there's kind of 
uh, structured response space so that you can't overwrite. So I kind of was talking about uh, people feeling that they had to use an awful lot of quantity, write an awful lot of information. And what I've done in my classes with tests and with homework is re limit how much they can write so that they have to remove all the padding and waffle and all the kind of stuff that they pad with. So kind of before doing this, I would have really seen that people would write heading and then they'd repeat the heading in the first sentence and just try and fill out their answer in the hope that having eight lines or 10 lines will give them way more marks than having three or four lines. Where I found when I've took that away and they're limited in how much they can write, they just kind of get down, um, down to business, if you uh, pardon the use of the name, but they kind of just get stuck into the answer straight away and forget about all the waffle and padding and they save loads and loads of time. And then within the activity book then we also have the a marking scheme and kind of tips, so an explanation of what to do for each of them and there's some structured responses. So in this one here, it's a kind of a, a part of an ABQ relevant to the chapter and you can see I've given a, a solution and layout and the marks beside it where they're awarded. Um, sorry, in there. Okay. Okay, so let's just have a look at some in a bit of closer detail. So I'll start with the exam focus. So like I said, all 27 chapters have a different exam focus, primarily around the different types of verbs, but it could be like, so it could be about definitions, illustrate, evaluate, and different areas in an exam where you could lose a couple of marks. And I suppose a couple of marks all add up. So um, some would probably be more important than the others, like discuss. If you got that wrong, you're probably gonna lose a, a good few percent. But then other things like when a question says, do you agree or not? It could be a half percent or, or three quarters of a percent gone. For, and it's, so it's, it's there to really just kind of tie in all the, the content that's given in the book and then have people be able to gain a couple of marks here and there and refer to it then, like I said earlier, in a class test, if they didn't get full marks for something, uh, an exam focus section should be able to help. So uh, I have a an example of a, a part of my script um, and it was about the verb outline. So this was 2018 and it was a question about, they gave you a little intro on Supermax and the advantages and disadvantages for a business in the fast food sector of choosing franchising. and just like what the students love here and what makes it really easy to teach is you can like the red underline is where the marks are being awarded and then the number to the side the two trees are how many marks were given and you can see my heading there that i've given is standard slash brand name so uh what we're saying here that uh, like the point of this was that if one fast food chain doesn't do well, then the whole fast food chain could be damaged. So Supermax was the kind of lead in, and it's saying if I let someone else open a Supermax and run it under uh, my name, that if their quality is really low, then um, the the whole brand is, suffers and every kind of, uh, each of our stores suffers. And what I've written there was standard slash brand name, and I meant that, but what that is is a title, and there hasn't been any statements, so there was no marks given. And it's little bits like that, that I wrote that and thought that's a great answer and move on like students would. And then it's kind of highlighting that and showing you need to write, it could uh, like lower the standards or lower quality standards could damage the brand name. And within our, in the exam focus sections, I kind of talk about that. Um, so this is what a page would kind of look like, or this is the top of the page where, so this was for outline. So you can see there's just a general introduction about what outline is and um, what the statements are and um, what you should do in that case. And then I use a past paper question. So it was the 2018 short in this instance. And then at the bottom of the page would be some sample answers of it. So there was six marks going for an implication here. And you can see in sample answer one, I've given an example of one that gets three marks in sample answer two. There's an example of one that still gets three marks, even though they've kind of used a, a title or a heading and made the same error I had made. And then in sample answer three, they're uh, going to get full marks for it. So it's so that students can kind of compare and contrast what a good answer is or a better answer or a bad answer and so on. And I've used a, that kind of uh, uh, layout in all of the exam focuses. So it's not just showing you the best thing, it's also showing kind of common errors and where people might slip up. And then I think I found that students kind of relate to that a lot because they can realize then if you get them to read that and then they go and reread their own answer, they kind of say, oh God, yeah, I did that. Or I'm just repeating the head and I'm just repeating the question. So um, I think they'll be a really useful addition to the book and a great way to develop exam technique uh, practically and kind of in use and something to refer to. Um, so with that, we also have digital resources. <clears throat> and as part of that digital resource for each of the 27 chapters, we have an exam focus video. So within that video, I'm basically explaining kind of what I just said there. So I'll just kind of uh, 
clip forward like they're a couple of minutes long so this was chapter eight and it's three and a half minutes and i'm uh you can't hear me now but i'm i'm talking at this stage and just explaining the different answers and pointing out where things are so these could be used to play in class play yourself um uh, before you kind of go into class and kind of uh, try and understand more kind of what I'm saying and stuff like that and they're for each of the chapters so they'll be able to show kind of uh, within the class and outside the class students will be able to you could uh, share it with them they'd be able to get access to them to be able to watch it and then you'd be able to uh, look at it before class and play it in class okay so the next thing then to do with the exams was the question and answer section so again I kind of just shown a script that so was the 2019 script this time and an answer I'd given, so on the left, uh, you can see that there's underlining and then marks given. And then what I've tried to do was tie that into down to business then. So in each chapter then there's a, a past paper question, higher and ordinary, and then the marking scheme is given and a sample answer. So within that sample answer, you can see there's red underline and then marks to the side. So it's kind of mimicking and mirroring the, the Leave Insert scripts. So students, uh, I think, really buy into that. And it's, it's a very visual tool rather than just giving them a, a sample answer or telling them that what's written in the book is fine. It's kind of shown appropriate answer length, where marks are given and um, how you can kind of maximize and pick up all marks. So uh, that was one thing that I we really wanted to kind of tie into the into the book and just get that. Uh, exam kind of focus and technique and and length into it um, alongside the content so uh, I refer to like the the last page of each chapter as well as an important terms and keywords page and it's kind of showing you how little you need to write on the left is like a, a question on Maslow that had come up and you can see the marks along the side and people like it's a classic example there for the for the subject everyone knows loads about maslow loves when they see it and then they end up writing about three pages on it and there's just no need so in a, about two thirds of a page there i was able to get 20 out of 20 from it just by focusing in on the keywords so like uh i i think the question was to link in hexagon that year so it was state explain and then link in hexagon and you can see that that would have been a, a question that uh, an answer that students would have really overwritten on and wasted loads of time and what I've tried to do there was apply that kind of information into the key terms thing to the side. And in that key terms thing, uh, Maslow takes up about eight, eight, uh, eight lines there to the side, uh, down the bottom of that key terms page. And it's essentially just like a catch all kind of cheat sheet for that chapter, what you need to know, what the keywords are uh, for each of the topics. And I find it, I think it'll be really, really helpful for your students. Again, I kind of trialed it with my students when I was making them and writing them. and. Uh, they, when I didn't give them a chapter with it in it, they, they were all asking for it because they just found it was the easiest way to study and a real quick way to kind of like um, practice uh, each of the topics to know which keywords were missing. Okay, so um, within the student activity book, this is just an example of some of it there. It's like uh, how it's laid out. I kind of had, had showed you uh, within the book itself, but just to kind of go on a closer look, there's marking schemes and tips kind of underneath each, qu each question. Um, and then there's appropriate space and layout like that for uh, part one and two. And then there's also a bit of scaffolding and structuring of answers so that I provide uh, an answer with marks beside it. And then I've given them not just how much space to write in, but also like that they have to make a statement, explain it and give a direct quotation because that was for an ABQ. So that kind of structured response, I, f I find gets them into really, students into really good habits really early on in fifth year so that then they know what layer to use when they're answering all the questions uh, as they uh, work through the course. Um, then that's just a bit of student reflection in the bottom as well there. So uh, the AFL piece. So I think we've kind of worked through the main features of the book and um, uh, we'll go and see if there's any questions um, to, to add into it. Uh, so uh, what approach have you taken to ABQs is one. Um, so within that actually I just touched on that in the student learning log. So there is a bank of ABQs at the back of the book. So it's essentially like an extra chapter after global marketing is done and it's kind of an introduction to it and how to uh, how to answer an ABQ, how to approach it. So the applied business question here. Um, and it kind of looks at structuring your answer, uh, what, how to plan it, how long to spend. And then it, uh, there's some, um, I have the 2019 in with a solution to it. And then within that solution again, it's like the marks are given along the side here and like the keywords are underlined because it's again an area that people really override in. So there's a lot of an explanation as to why you would lay out and answer a certain way in an ABQ, what's needed and with a sample answer for the 2019 and then on top of that 
there is a bank of kind of sample ABQs for the different units. And then what I've done in the student activity log is actually each relevant chapter, uh, I would take an excerpt from the ABQ and put it into it, and then you just answer that. So it gets students not to be like uh, overwhelmed with a full ABQ, that they answer parts of it and kind of get used to answering ABQs. And then within the textbook itself, then in some of the exam focus areas, uh, there's three of them on the ABQ kind of explaining in detail how much you need to write, where marks are given, and uh, and so on. So um, yeah, is the book primarily pitched at higher level? So uh, I kind of touched on that, I suppose, with the key terms, like the, the, eat the past paper question and answer section has ordinary and higher. So you can see it on this page here um, that there's a higher level question. This is uh, identifying business opportunities again. 2019 question six, uh, question mark and scheme and sample answer. And then a 2019 question 6A, uh, similar again, question mark and scheme and sample answer with all the marks to the side. So it is both higher and ordinary. The exam focus section is primarily on the on the higher level exam, but it's, it's relevant to, to all. And I think the real uh, benefit of this page that I was talking about, the important key terms and keywords is that like for the, the top student, it really highlights like what they need to give, what's really important to touch on, and then they can use the rest of the chapter to really develop that. And then for the student who finds it more difficult, then they can use this as their kind of go-to and must-know sheet, and it kind of really condenses down and makes it a lot more concise as to what's what's needed. Uh, with the sample questions at the back of the chapter then, we there's a bank of higher and ordinary level questions as well. So there is a mix, so it's, it's definitely a, a Leaving Cert business book for, for all levels and abilities as well. Okay, so anything else? What is the benefit of having real life case studies to the exam? So again, I suppose uh, that that's that I kind of touched on that earlier on. Um, I think the video is going to be up and you'll be able to rewatch uh, what we mentioned earlier. But I suppose just bringing uh, the subject to life and getting people a lot more engaged. So I'll try and pull one out here. Um, like we did one with Bujo, which is like a burger joint in Sandy Mount, and they t uh, talked about all their social responsibility and their ethics and how they kind of do business and that they know all their farmers and uh, know the names of everyone that supplies them and they try and get as much Irish as possible. Um, I can't, I don't have a spot on it here. Um, but that kind of really engaged with my class when I used it with them. Um, I think what it would really do would inspire some of your students to maybe go out and actually look at local businesses, people around them, go and interview them. Um, so you could set up like a, a midterm project maybe that they would go and ask six or seven questions based on a particular chapter and go and search out businesses in their area and put together like one page projects or two page projects on it that kind of mirror the book. And I think that it would be really useful. So, um, but it's really for understanding and just bringing in real life business um, and real life Irish business because the Leaving Cert uh, course and exam seems to really just focus in on, on Ireland. So that was the idea behind that. Um, and then what digital resources are there with the book? Um, so we have the student learning log. There is a teacher's resource book um, that goes along with that. And that's just all the solutions to all the questions. So that again, they kind of be, the idea would be a one page solution. So all the questions in the student learning log are per page. Uh, similar to the textbook, so it's just one clear idea per page, and then the teacher resource book would mirror that exactly so that in class you could put up a solution and have people compare their uh, homework or their classwork or whatever it is from the student activity log to it. Um, and it should be a really useful kind of uh, uh, way to illustrate how you get full marks in different questions, and then the students can get them as well. There's uh, a list of all the relevant past paper questions for each of the chapters as well and they could use that as a bank of questions to go to. All the student learning log questions are, um, they're not past paper questions, but they're developed like them. So they're exam style questions, but then they're in addition to all the past paper questions. And obviously as a teacher, you'd be pushing them to do as many of the past paper questions as possible. So we've made a real handy bank of uh, relevant questions for each chapter. And then the exam focus video, which we which I had up and was kind of flicking through there. Um, they're all up online and on folans.ie you can click on and samples of each of them for each chapter are there as long as well as a PowerPoint uh, for each chapter. So you can go and check them out now. Um, I think I've pretty much kind of got through m most of what I wanted to get through within the book, I suppose. Um, like, uh, I suppose the main thing is the, the keywords don't change too much and I'm just trying to present it in a way that all the keywords are still there, all the main learning is still there, and all we've done really is added in uh, a focus on exam technique and a link into the exam so that they're not kind of separate things because essentially that's what the students are using the book for and trying to get to, so that 
uh, as you work through the course, you can start adding tools and knowledge about how to tackle different questions, different verbs as you go through it. And they kind of build up this kind of a, a base and foundation of knowledge of how to tackle exams and you can refer back to it. And then the use of all the digital resources like the videos and stuff can just be replayed and re-looked re at like that. Um, and yeah, I've, I kind of really enjoy doing it. Like it was a, a, a tough enough slog to get through, but I feel that I had a kind of lot of information I want to share, a lot of kind of things I've learned over the years. Like it's been kind of my main kind of passion within the subject to kind of delve deeper into how people score points. And then I suppose they showed that by even just going and sitting the exam to try and kind of understand that further. And just being able to see your script and look at marks and why they were given and then try and figure out and talk to different teachers and, and people to figure out why not. And I feel I've really kind of developed a really full understanding of the Leaving Cert paper and, and where marks go. And then that's what I've tried to kind of share with you with the book. So if you, uh, it'd be great. Make sure you keep an eye out for your Folan sales rep in your staff room. And um, there's more information on Folans.ie or on Twitter and different things like that. Uh, it'd be great if you just, if you gave it a look and gave it a real uh, thought when it comes into your staff room and see if you want to check it out and be brilliant if you could use it because I think you'll find it really useful. So thanks a lot for tuning in and uh, good night, yeah.